Good morning again. This is Kristen coming to you from the St. Mary Ann Cope Shrine and Museum. Very quiet. It's very, very peaceful here. I want to give you a little bit of information about Mary Ann's early years and uh, maybe fill in a little bit of gaps and things as to the reasoning behind she was why she was such a great leader within her community. So she and her family emigrated here from Germany when she was just a toddler. They settled in Utica, New York, just east of Syracuse here. It was a very large German community. And her father fell ill when she was just in the eighth grade. And so after the eighth grade, which was not odd for uh, girls of that time, she stopped school and she began working. And in Utica, it was a very large textile factory town. And she went to, went to work to uh, bring paychecks home and help care for her younger siblings. So if you think about it during this time, being the eldest with a number of younger siblings, she was not only learning financial responsibility, um, bringing paychecks home, she was caring for them and that's not only motherly caring, but that is health care, mental care, that is keeping a team of people together, keeping a family together. And she did that for several years. She did not enter the Sisters of St. Francis's community here in Syracuse until she was 24. At that point, her father passed away and she was given permission to leave the family and enter the community of sisters. So she brought with her several years of caring for others. She knew she wanted to be in service to others. She knew she wanted to commit to take the vows and be a sister and be of service to her community. And she was simply doing it with her family before she was doing it with the sisters. So she very quickly uh, moved up in responsibility of positions within the sisters. She was teaching, she was an administrator of schools, she was the mother superior of uh, homes and houses and convents that they had around central New York. And then administrator of St. Joseph's Hospital here in Syracuse. So we can all relate in some way to Marianne's life. It was nothing extraordinary in her younger years. She was very much like other children of her, of her time. Uh, during that time, it was a regular profession to become a nun or a priest. If you, had, if you were a family and had a daughter, had a few daughters, you expected one of them would probably become a nun. And if you had sons, one was probably going to be a priest. It's very much like our normal, regular occupations today. So what I like to say is that she was an ordinary woman. She was an ordinary girl. She was an ordinary woman, but she made extraordinary choices and decisions during her life. And these are things that we can all relate to. So she, we know she had her faith, she had her belief that drove her forward. It showed her very clearly what was right and what was wrong, what needed to be done, what had to be done for the good of the community, for all the people, just like in the charter of St. Joseph's Hospital. We are here to serve everyone, no matter race, religion, economic means, or illness. No discrimination, we serve everyone. And she saw that very, very clearly. So when she was put in a position to make very important and hard decisions, for instance, going to Hawaii, going to a foreign land, she had to really look within her heart and her belief and overcome what we can probably assume was a lot of fear, foreign land, going away from your family, from your community, going to a place 
where you won't know anyone, you won't know the language, you don't know the customs, and you don't know the illness. You don't know where you're going to be. You don't know exactly what you're going to be doing. And you're being put right in the middle of a horrible pandemic. So something I think we can really take to heart is that keeping your belief and knowing your belief and relying on that faith, you know what's right and wrong. You can feel it in your heart and you have to overcome the fears that tell you that maybe you should be doing otherwise. But know that we are here to be in service to one another and ask ourselves, how can we serve? What can we do? We might not be on the front lines, but we can support the people there and we can be there for them. And that's not just giving money or items or anything like that. It's being there for them energetically and spiritually and letting them know that they are supported, that we do support everything they do, no matter, no matter race, religion, economic means, illness, no discrimination, that we care. So that's all I ask today. It's just to take in the thought of knowing in your heart what's right and what's wrong and tapping into that and following that. And that will overcome a lot of the fear and the stress if we find our purpose and we find our way of supporting. I'll be back. Everybody take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Take care.